Okay, so first we're going to start off with some terminology. Uh, we're going to cover security hierarchy, which is when uh, multiple security records exist, the system will apply the security by following the existing security hierarchy. The star public role, which is a special role assigned to all users that determines the default access in the system. The difference between a closed system and an open system. So a closed system is a security system designed to close the system off to users and grant access back as needed. And job-based versus process-based roles. So job-based roles are built around different jobs as opposed to process-based roles, which are built around the processes within the job. Fine cut, which is a method used to filter the menu based on each role. And row uh, row and form exit depth, which is how far down into the application the, the user is allowed to access. So here is a, I'm sorry, can you see the, the web? Sorry. Uh, okay, so security hierarchy. Here's a screenshot, and this is how the system um, determines that security. Yeah, we can and see everything, just so you know. Okay, I didn't know how to minimize it. Oh, no, you're good. I, I don't see anything except for your slides. Okay, great. So the first record found is the one that the user gets. And once that is found, the system stops searching for lower priority records. So this is, it's covering my screen, so I can't see what's behind it. So this is, um, you know what, Lisa, if you click the um, orange arrow on um, up at the top, that'll just push it in so you only have- Oh, great. That's what I was looking for. Okay, so this is hierarchy, the security is overwritten. And again, this is the first record that's found is the one that gets used. This is a screenshot of the star public role. And here you will see that it is a, cl a closed system. So you'll notice that by the ends up here, which indicates no access. This is a special role in JDE that all users have. It determines what default access this uh, is in the system. So this is whether it's an open system, which the ends up there would be all yes. And then this grants access, um, this is like the default access. And it's designed so that the roles assigned to the user override what is written at this level. So what's the difference between an open system and a closed system? The open system, the star public line has star all yes or blank. And the roles are used to limit users access. So this means a new system a new user entered into the system starts off with all access. In a closed system, the star public line has star all no explicitly, and the roles are used to give users access, meaning the user has no access until it is given. So what are job-based versus process-based roles? Job-based roles are roles built based around different jobs. For example, an accountant, warehouse manager, sales associate, CFO, et cetera. And process-based roles are roles built based on different processes. So think of all the processes within those jobs. For example, an accounts payable person would have voucher entry, voucher approval, voucher post, delete, voucher, et cetera. What is fine cut? Fine cut allows the menu to be filtered per role you would click on menu filtering in JDE, which you see a little screenshot there in the middle. You would select your menu, right click, select view by role, select the role and double click to remove items on the menu from the role site. So in the example to the far right, this user would have access to non raw mat purchasing, which has the little green check mark by the folder on the folder and core system setup. So you're seeing all the menu options here, but when the user opens their menu, they would only see those two options and all the other ones wouldn't be there. And row exit form depth. 
This is how far down the user can go from the application on the menu. So for instance, if a user clicks on accounts payable, this would be how far down into that role are they able to click. For instance, within voucher entry, a user could row form exit to the address book. But is that access needed or not? So there are different practices because each company's practice is unique. What works for company A may not work for company B. And we do have customized solutions that are needed for each company based on those business needs. And business needs, um, depending on if you're a small company or a large company, whether you, your company is SOX compliant or not, um, of course, there are restrictions with a SOX compliant company, so those would have to be taken into consideration, um, such as segregation of duties, so roles would be very limited for each user, whereas a company that is not SOX compliant might have one or two people who share roles where duties may overlap to a certain degree. Division of labor, depending on how your company is set up and work is divided among the users in the system, security can be tailored to your specific business needs, whether you would need generalized roles or specialized roles. And segregation of duties, which are SOD. This is an internal control used to prevent fraud where more than one person um, or user shares a job. Roles would have to be split between the users based on what their portion of the process is. So what do we use as the best practice? This is what the security team considers as best practice for a security system setup. One, we advise to make sure your system is closed. So Star Public should be locked down. And this keeps new users without defined roles from being able to access system data. So the roles would need to be added to the user to grant them access to perform their job. And this is done by adding roles. So we can have job-based roles or process-based roles. And what would that look like? So job-based roles has all the access a user might need to do their job. So depending on a person's job or position in the company, say for instance, an accountant would have access to the general ledger module. Someone in accounts payable would have all access to the AP module, et cetera. Users will have a lot fewer roles with more access. So this is like broad access. But potentially users may only need parts of existing roles or a job might be split between people. So users would have access to too much of the system in an open system that could potentially lead to fraud. For example, an accounts receivable specialist having a job-based role would have the ability to set up customers, enter payment information or bank information, create an invoice, adjust pricing, and possibly issue credits and refunds, which could potentially allow the user to create a fake customer, create an invoice for that customer, receive the full payment, and then later adjust pricing or issue a credit or refund, which would could be linked to a private bank account, which would then be considered theft or fraud. So segregation of duties would come into play here to prevent things like this from being able to slip through undetected. And in this, with job-based roles, the larger jobs would have a lot more security lines. So for instance, if a job would need to be split later, it would be harder to do this with job-based roles because there would be um, potentially some overlapping of duties within the roles. And using a job-based role setup, if the process must be split up, new roles would have to be created. And also the existing ones would have to be edited to distribute the access to users accordingly. So there would be potential if we were to edit one user's access that it could, if that role is assigned to other users, it would potentially affect them, which would make a little more work for us. Process-based roles. This is where the user only has the access to complete one process. So for instance, voucher entry. A users will have a lot more roles in this instance. Splitting security is a lot easier here and cleaner. So it's a one-to-one -one role. So for instance, if you needed to take away someone's ability to say delete a voucher, you would just remove that role. 
Um, and then here we would add or remove roles as a user's job changes. So if someone gets a promotion, needs additional access, we could grant that. And it makes it a lot easier than having to, um, with a job-based role, split it up. So um, also as part of our recommended best practice, we advise um, to set up your menu. So um, first we would suggest using a spreadsheet outside of JDE, make it a little easier to move things around, um, customize it the way you'd like. So while setting up the roles, you would set up the new menu configuration, depending on, on what you need. And then you would align the new menu to follow the new programs. So here we suggest um, to follow the separation of roles. So you would separate the menu out by department or module. So in the screenshot here, you can see there's foundation systems, financials, and then under that we'd have accounts receivable, accounts payable. Um, and then within the modules, you would then break it down by process. And then this would um, have the applications in UBE, which are the programs and reports. And this would allow the user to find the programs easily. So I know you can't see it here, but uh, under accounts payable, if you would double click under daily processing, under there they'd have like voucher entry. Um, and you get a little more specific within the folder. And then we would set up the fine cut. So Fine Cut allows JDE to filter what users can see based on their roles. So some of the JDE menus can show a lot of extra roles that a user doesn't necessarily need. So Fine Cutting can be used to hide those extra menus so the user doesn't get curious and explore things they maybe shouldn't. And then it cuts down on confusion because they know they have exactly what they need. So if you currently have an open security system and do not use Fine Cut but are using job-based roles, users could access other programs because they have run and install access. So a user with a fixed assets job-based role could potentially find their way to say an inventory module because of the current system setup. Since the, me the menu would follow new roles, filtering should be fairly straightforward. And then one thing to note is that FineCut is not a form of security, it is only a, a method of filtering. So even if a user cannot see a program, they can still manage to find their way to it. And then limiting row and form exit depth. This would limit how far down a user can go into the program's row and form exit. And the limit is on a role by role basis. This keeps users from accessing programs that they normally wouldn't have. So you could say have one form exit row lead to another, which would lead to another, which would lead to another, which could give the user potential to have access to things you don't want them to have access to. So a user in AP could row exit from voucher entry to the address book, which would be okay if the user has inquiry access only, but you would have to determine whether you want the user to have access to edit. And then if another role has access to a program that is a row exit, the user will still be able to access it, but users who don't have the second role won't be able to access it. Meaning if you gave the person doing accounts payable access to um, edit the address book, they would be able to row or form exit to it. And then if, you, if they didn't have that access, then it wouldn't allow them to do that. So, if you have been subject to a failed audit, or unsure if you're operating a best practice security model, or unaware of your potential security gaps, please don't hesitate to reach out to the GSI security team. We would be more than happy to assist you in ensuring your security model is set up to best practice standards and that the business is safe from potential fraudulent behavior. And right now, we are offering special pricing excuse me, for webinar attendees only. And this is um, a one-time fee. Our standard price is 7,000, but we are offering a special webinar price of uh, 49.95. And this special pricing, pricing is only valid until Friday, February 14th, 2020. All 
All right, thank you so much, Lisa. Let me know, okay. give me one second and I'll share my screen back and All right, can you see my screen okay? Yes. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. All right, I would like to cover a few follow-up items and then we'll get into our question and answer section of our webcast. Our webcast today is part of our free ongoing educational webcast series in J for J.D. Edwards and our upcoming webcasts are currently listed on the screen. And to view our most up-to-date schedule, just go to getgsi.com forward slash JD Edwards webcasts. And check out erptalk.com, which is a problem-solving forum where you can get your JD Edwards and other enterprise applications questions answered, as well as contribute to answers that others have asked questions about. And stay connected with us on social media. All of our handles are currently listed on the screen. You can see our most up-to-date posts on webcasts, events, industry insights, and a lot more. So we provide extensive free educational resources for the JD Edwards community, including our weekly educational webcasts, our monthly newsletter called the GSI Insider, and we also have an online resource center where you can access our on-demand webcasts, white papers, and a lot more than that. And if you'd like to sign up for our weekly email reminders or upcoming webcast, you can go to getgsi.com on the main menu, click resources and events on the right hand side and then select JD Edwards. All right, well, I see we have a couple of um, questions. I would just like to remind everyone that if you would still like to submit a question, you can do so through the questions panel in the GoToWebinar console window on the right side of your screen. And if you minimized your console earlier, just click the left facing arrow to redisplay the questions panel. All right, Lisa, I see we have a couple questions here. And our first question comes from Mark, and he says, what level of effort um, time, related, time related does moving an open security system to a closed security system take? That would depend on the setup and how JDE is used for each client. So in general, you're looking at a minimum of five to, five to six weeks. Um, that's our shortest project to date. So you're basically flipping the system upside down when you go from open to close. And so the method in how you grant and restrict your access has changed. Thus, proper planning, designing, and building and testing methods are needed. Okay, great. And then our next question here is from Bill. And Bill asks, other than implementing SOD, what is the best way to monitor my user's access? Um, a security tool would be the best option, like All Out Security, QSoft, et cetera. Having a security tool will enable specific access reporting that can be run over your roles and users. If not, using a security tool, routine checks on who has access to certain critical objects, for instance, the PO911 for general entries or the the PO 91012 for address book, the PO 900950, which is a security, oh, sorry, the P00950 security workbench, et cetera. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much, everybody, for your questions and Lisa for your presentation today. As a follow up from today's webcast, we ask that you complete a short one minute survey when you exit. And you will be receiving an email with the link to our resource center on our website where you can access the recording from today's webcast as well as a copy of the presentation. And after today's webcast, we will do the drawing for the $25 Amazon gift card. And anyone that attended the entire webcast will be eligible. And if you have any follow-up questions, you can contact Lisa or myself and we will make sure we will get back to you. And our contact info is currently listed on the screen. Thanks again, Lisa. And thank you, everybody, for attending our presentation today. And we hope that you guys have a great day. Thank you. Thanks.